What is going on everyone? Hope you all have had a wonderful day so far. And you won't believe where we're actually at. Again. But this time we're going to revamp it and we're going to make it better than the last. We are in Pikeville, Kentucky. And we're going to do the Hatfield and McCoy feud sites. Oh now, boy. Now the last time we went here we didn't really get to see much. Plus we had a another camera that didn't half work. And it was bad. So we're going to revamp it this time. We're using my phone and we've got a few other electronic stuff here with us. Yeah, hope you all enjoy the video. All right.
when Randall sued Floyd for the hog. Randall lived up here. Floyd lived over by Aunt Betty. This is the mountain the pig got mixed up on. Uh-oh. And then your next side over is the hog trial tent, uh, hog trial cabin where they have the That's hog That's what trial. you was talking about uh -huh. earlier, wasn't it? Yeah. Let me show you a few things here. Uh, I've got it on this page here. Um, you can move it. You're not going. Did you show them the little sign around the curve down yes, here? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The cemetery that you can't yeah, he, go see? Yeah. He thought oh. he, that all this was made up. I was like, no, it's real. No, no. Listen. This, this really all... happened, right? Oh, yeah. Look, come in here. Yeah, I'll show you stuff here. I'll okay. Uh, this is a little slick when it's wet, so if you want to get in here, stand on this rug, it don't slide as much. Okay. Uh, the nice History story. Channel movie that Kevin Costner played in yeah. was about 60% accurate. There's oh, things really? That right. There's things wrong. There's yeah. things they left out. Um, and those are the actual ancestors? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to show you a lot of stuff here if you've got a few minutes. Yeah, we uh, do. We do, don't we? Mm -hmm. When... Randall and Sarah got married in 1849. They lived in West Virginia. Uh -huh. The movie channel made it look like all McCoys were in Kentucky and all Hatfields in West Virginia. Well, that ain't so. It ain't. They lived in West Virginia, and then when her, they got married, her dad gave her the property. It was her dowry, and they moved here in 1850. Now, up there's where the house sat. Randall's hand dug well, dug in 1850. Uh -huh. Still has 14 to 15 foot of water in it. The original well box was a wooden well box, Love it. and it's been replaced with that one. But other than that, that well, when you look at it from ground level down, it's not been changed. Well, the, the behind the well, the stone laying on the ground is like the stone right here in front of you. Uh huh. We had a washout about 11 years ago, and that was leftover stone. But behind uh -huh. that stone, you see the sign sticking up on the ground. Yeah, I do. That's where Randall's cabin sat. Well, that's it. It sat long ways, like this, facing this way against uh -huh. the hill. Uh huh. It was about five foot above the sign. The lower end was down toward the well. Uh huh. Now that sign is about these guys right here, the diggers. Yeah. Well, digger shop. They've been here a couple times and have filmed uh, two different shows. Literally, they were out in my garage. They had battery packs and tents set up in the yard. In the picture here, they're digging out part of a metal grate from Randall McCoy's fireplace. Yeah. There's orange ribbons on the high side of the hill up there. They found bullets on the hillside. Really? As you walk around here, you look on this side over here, there's some orange ribbons on wooden stakes. They found bullets on that hillside. Uh, but, uh, now, this is where the Hatfields came on the raid. They burnt the house, killed the two kids, Calvin and Alla Fair. Oh, but, uh, beat the mother, left her for dead. That'll happen right there. What okay. about that? Now, when you came around the curve down here, the little homemade sign. Let well, uh, me ask you a question. Wait. You said the Hatfields come from that side of the... No. Over here is where, over by Aunt Betty's house is where uh, Floyd Hatfield lived. Okay. And Randall lived here and the pigs went back and forth over this I night. got you. I got they you. lived eight miles from here and came kind of the same way you're going back. Followed okay. the road and the creek and so forth. Uh-huh. And I'll show you some pictures on the cabin over there. Okay. Okay. Now. Uh, but you said they come out of the woods though. Oh, on well, that one. They came this way. Okay. 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 When Randall lived here and Sue Floyd, Randall lived here, Floyd was on that side and the big, we're going back and forth over this way. Yeah. But the Hatfields came this way, okay? The next site you're gonna see is a Hatfield house and it's in Kentucky. See, they made it look like all Hatfields were in West you, Virginia. You all thought uh, the Hatfields was in uh, West Virginia. The majority Virginia. were, but not all of them. This side over here is Preacher and it's Hatfield. Oh, and, swear. And that's where the hog trial took place in his house. Well, what about that? Now. <laughs> This is where all of this happened here, burning the house and so forth. Yeah. Back to the cemetery. Uh, by the way, sweetie, uh, I've got a whole lot to say. I don't know if you've got enough time to film all of it or not. Yeah, we do. Okay. We do. Right around the curve, did you see the sign? I don't know if he said he showed you or whatever. It says McCoy Cemetery. Yeah. yeah. Well, we saw it. Okay. There's <laughs> six McCoys buried there. Six. That's where they buried the three brothers that were killed at the Pawpaw site. Now, I was raised in Buskirk. That's where that's at. And when we were boys, it wasn't cleaned out like it is now. Uh -huh. And we would get our machetes and hack our way down in there right where they were shot, put our tents and lean-tos, fish in the river. Now, the river's coming up. It's probably going to be, could be close to getting in the water, but that's where they shot the boys. Really? And then they brought them over here, and they buried them on that hill where they could come out on their porch and look across the way and see where they were buried. Oh, God. Six years later, the house was burnt. Calvin and Alifair were killed. They're buried there. 
five. In between, a son named William passed. He's buried there. So here's what you can't see. 1975, the man that lives there allowed the McCoys to put that monument in the cemetery behind his house, and it was paid for by the McCoys. Oh, we don't. He allowed it. The next summer, they had a dedication ceremony. These two old men were the guests of honor, Jim McCoy and Willis Hatfield, the last two immediate family members still alive at that time. Oh, no, no. I was a junior in high school when this happened, and I actually got to meet these two men. Did you really? This man here is a nephew of Randall, born in 1884. Wow. Four years before the cabin was burned. Yeah. He died in 1984, just a few months shy of being 100 years old. What about that? His grandson was a good friend of mine, and I was a pallbearer at his funeral here about a year ago this time. And he's given me information of this picture here and a few things that I'll show you about in a minute. So this is where... Uh, that was where you got that all of I got a lot of I got it from every all kinds oh, of different from places. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this old man, he's a nephew of Randall. Like I said, he was born in eighty four. This other one here, I got to meet him at my dad's business there in Buskirk when I was a junior in high school. This is Willis Hatfield. Oh that's right. He is next to the youngest son of Devil Lance. What did they get along? I mean These two guys did. They did? Yeah. Now he was born right after the cabin was burnt in 1888. The old man you're looking at here? Yeah. Is that little boy right there in the famous photo? I'll be doggone. And you can see what I mean about being blessed. I got to chit chat and talk with a few of them. I just oh, wish absolutely. I knew then what I know now. I would have asked a lot more questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah we all would. Well, right after they had the ceremony, the man that lives over there now shuts the cemetery down. Now, as I mentioned before, before the Kevin Costner miniseries came out, not one person came to see this. No. Really? The movie came out Memorial Day weekend of 2012. Since then, this book that you all just signed in for me is my third book in going on eight and a half, going on nine years now. Well. I've got all 50 states, 29 foreign countries. Wow. Signing my book. Wow. But my whole point is... Nobody was coming. So when he shuts the cemetery down, who did he shut out of the cemetery? All of us. Basically the McCoys. Yeah. He stopped them from coming to see their family yeah, cemetery, sure which is illegal in every state. Yeah. The McCoys were as patient as you can be. 17 years later, they take him to court and they win. Family members can go visit. No one else can. The next side over at the hog trail cabin, when you get there, you'll see this sign talking about a McCoy cemetery. That sign is supposed to be over here. Uh, he would not allow the sign to be placed on the property, so it's two and a half miles away. I swear. The irony of the whole deal is the man over there's name is John Vance. Uh -huh. He is a descendant of some sort from Uncle Jim Vance, the man that led the raid burning the house. Yeah. This is a descendant from him. So there's a whole lot of irony there where... Well, now, what started the feud in the first place? The hog or the... The hog came later. Okay. It, a lot of it came from the Civil War where Randall's brother was killed ah. by Uncle Jim Vance and okay. Devil Vance yeah. out of the Civil War. And then there were other little uh, altercations. People say, why didn't Randall do something about it right out of, out of the Civil War? Well, from everything we've been told and some of the McCoys I've talked to and some of the books and different things, Randall McCoy had been captured uh -huh. and was in a northern Ohio prisoner of war camp. I'll be done. Most believe he didn't know anything about it till he got out. See. see, his brother was killed four months before the war ended, in January of 1865. The war ended in April of 65. Most believe he didn't know anything about it until he came back well, and then found out his brother was killed and how he had been killed. He was wounded, came back, wouldn't have never fought again, but they offed him, so to speak. And then things kept going on. Every little thing kept getting worse and worse, and it was just one of those deals. Well, okay. Yeah. Um, well, you think they have a museum of all this? Well, there are some little museums here and there, one in Pikeville. There was one in Williamson that's been closed lately because of the, the, the venue that yeah, it was yeah. in. The Well, no, it, there was a man that owned the school, and there, it's the whole thing. They had a schoolhouse that they put the museum in. There's arguments over that right now. And the one in Pikeville's closed for the pandemic. Yeah. So. Well, uh, it, it, it seems like if your uh, subject is it with a half fill on the coy, there's always controversy or something. Most of them get along now, too. Really? But there's a few, and I don't know the so man. I've never met the man. Are they still half-fills and McCoys living? Gosh, 
Yeah, it's all over the place. I really? wish, I'll show you a few more things before you leave. Okay. Now back to this deal here. Not a lot of people have seen this picture. This was given to me. It's a snapshot given to me by Gary McCoy. He is a direct descendant from Randall. Uh -huh. That's Randall on the right. His oldest son, Jim, one of the main ones in the feud. These are all family members. See the well? Yeah. They're standing right up in front of that well in what 1901. About that? What this about is that? 13 years after they had been burned out and had moved to Pikeville. Randall's wife had already passed by this time. Have you been over to the cemetery over there? Mm -hmm. On her headstone, it said she died 1890, and there's a dash. <coughs> she died sometime between 1894 and 1898, and they're not really sure of the really exact sure. date. I would have put 96 and make them prove me wrong. <laughs> but, but this was the first time he'd been back to this property since they had buried her, and he came or since they'd been burned out 13 years earlier. And he came back to visit that home site and to visit his children's graves on the hill, and this picture here was taken. What about that? Now, that's another thing in the movie wrong. When Randall, in the movie, he was upset, burning papers and pictures, he catches the cabin on fire, and it falls in on him and kills him. Didn't happen. Oh, okay. Randall was almost 15 years older than Devil Ants. He was born October 30th, 1825. Devil Ants was born September 9th, 1839. 14 and a half years going on a little farther. Yeah. In early January of 1914, Randall McCoy is 88 years old. He's at a grandson's house. He's, there, I don't know if it was a cooking stove on the fireplace or what the deal was. If he passed out, fainted, fell into it, whatever he did, he fell in and got burned. Second and third degree burns on his neck, shoulder, arm, whatever it was. He, he gets was 88. In, and he was 88. Uh -huh. It gets infected. Uh -huh. Then he develops pneumonia. He doesn't die till two and a half months later, March the 28th. He died from the complications. He got yeah. pneumonia and yeah. then infections and so forth. So, as you can see, he didn't die in a cabin fire the way the movie portrayed. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody has seen this picture here. And this is the other picture that everybody has seen. The two most famous photos. Uh, this little boy right here is Tennyson, the youngest son of Devil Ants. He's a great, his great grandson's been here many times. He's a good friend of ours, uh -huh. William T. Tattoo. He's the one that passed this along to me. And this is why I did a guided tour business for about three years and had a five-star rating. Well, I thought you must have had experience in doing this. Well, I worked 35 years for the phone company. Oh, okay. I've sat in houses of Hatfields, McCoys, Clyde, Vances, Chafin, you name them, all over the place. And a lot of them are good friends of mine that are, and I'm not talking my cousin's brother's uncle's sister son. <laughs> I'm talking great grandsons, great granddaughter, and great great grandsons, and so forth from both sides. Uh -huh. This is an example. The great grandson of Tennyson, the youngest son of Devil Ants. And he's the one that let me in on some of this little stuff right here. On this one, I'm getting ready to tell you. Now, I will tell you what I already knew. These two pictures were taken the same day in 1897. Wow. John C. is not in either picture. He's still out west, hiding out, timbering, had a bounty on his head. Didn't come back two years later in 1898. Two other sons are not in either picture. Now, they're in the area with their families, but for whatever reason, they're not in the picture. Robert E. Lee Hatfield and Elliot Rutherford Hatfield. We don't know why. Now, he said, do you look at the great-grandson's face? He said, you can check this out. Tell the people when they come in and pass this along. He said, look at your little face. He's just a little normal seven-year-old kid. Yeah. He said, now look at him. He's just, he can whip me and you both. Oh, yeah. Well, this picture was taken first. And he said what happened was, this is Cap, his wife Nancy, and these are Cap's children. Cap's son Coleman is standing right there holding a pistol. Came time to take that picture. He wanted to hold a pistol. Devil Lance wouldn't let him. He's pouting because he can't hold a pistol. You only find things out like that from the family. What about that? You see what that I'm that's why he's, he's got the frown on That's his face. That's exactly why. What about that? Now, um, that was cool. This picture here was given to me about nine years ago by the grandson of the old McCoy man I showed you about. Uh -huh. He said, Neil, hang on to the picture. He said, it's an original. And he says, those are very important people to the few, but I've had the picture so long, I can't remember who they are. Oh, boy. But I know you, you'll find out. So I've had it several years. 
One of my best Hatfield buddies right now is Clarence Hatfield. He's the great grandson of Ellison, the one the three boys killed. Mm -hmm. And he said, Neil, this was about three years ago, he, or going on four maybe, he invited me to the Hatfield family reunion over in Beach Creek. Oh boy. Sampy Hatfields, he's the son of Wall, and it was their family reunion. Yeah. I got a bunch of autographs and pictures and so forth. And I get this book. Now you can see these are the three main brothers from the few. Now there's other brothers, but these are the three main ones. And I'm flipping through the book. We're getting ready to leave. Each one of these pages is a different lineage of sons and daughters from uh -huh. the family. This is Devil Lance's mom. Oh, sorry. Notice her name, Nancy Vance. Yeah. Hatfield. Uncle Jim Vance's sister is Devil Lance's mom. Well, I'll be done. So that's just one of the pages there. Well, I'm flipping through here looking for my buddy's page. He came through Ellison Hatfield. Uh-huh. And as soon as I hit Ellison's page, I want you to look at the face I see. Oh, same picture. Sure is. They just cropped it out. Yeah, that's all I done. Now, I told my buddy about it. Some of them didn't believe I had it. He, he didn't think it was all real or not. He said, I doubt it, Neil, if it's very... Then I told him about my buddy Jimmy who gave it to me. Now, my buddy Jimmy had, has been everywhere and done everything. Uh-huh. Traveled with Hubert Humphrey in the 60s when, they ran, when he ran for president. Uh, was in Hollywood. Dated Patty Duke Aston for several years oh, when he was out there. Really? Um, was in Nashville with Buck Owens, Merle Haggard, Charlie yeah. Pride. Been around them. Uh, I mean, just on and on and on. And he gave me the picture. Now, my buddy Clarence, when I told him this, he said, Neil, I'll come check the picture out later to see if it's, if I think it's real or not. I said, great. But in the meantime, tell me who the two ladies are. Uh huh. Well, he said, Neil, you know, that's my great grandfather, Ellison. That's his wife, Sarah. He says, that's my great grandmother. Oh, no. Now, Ellison was around 42 to 42 and a half years old when he died August 9th of 1882. The election was on August 7th. He was wounded, lived two days, died the afternoon of August 9th. Oh, See, no. in the movie, they immediately took him back into West Virginia. Yeah. No, he was wounded. They took him back into West Virginia. They took the boys up a little way up the road to stayed at one of the other houses and the deputies kept them overnight the next day they started to pipe with them. Why well, they did that? that? They didn't get the facts right. Well, was, it, was it by accident? I just think they tried to put too much in at once and not check it on certain things. Uh, I'll be honest. I think they... See, the film movie was filmed in Romania. Oh, really? It wasn't even filmed in the United States. I didn't know. They had that. a lot of money. And I think, to be honest, on some of the things, they tried to appease the Hatfields and some of the others. They tried to appease the McCoys. Tried to make it a... I think you just need to tell the story. You yeah, know? yeah, just beat them with facts. But anyway, back to the deal. When he died, he was 42, 42 and a half. She was 38. Now, in this picture, what you're looking at, the week, best we can figure was taken around 1931. She's 89 years old in that picture. Uh, when he died, his oldest son was Elliot Big Engine Hatfield, huh. 15 years old. Uh -huh. When... When he died, a little later, he married a lady by the name of Vasi Christian, and that's Vasi. That's her daughter-in-law. Uh -huh. Now, this is a grandchild. This is her great-grandchild, and still and haven't figured out which one it is yet. Now, back to this deal here. This is Big Engine Elliot, and this is Vasi when they were young. Uh -huh. This is a picture of them not long before they passed, or they both passed in 1939. Uh -huh. You can see by her face, she's closer to that age here in this picture. Yeah. Uh, he was 15 when his daddy died. Six years later, at the age of 21, he was one of the men on the raid that burnt the house. Oh, no. So he's been here. Now, my buddy Clarence comes in and looks at the picture, and he says, Neil, you very well could have the original. He says, I don't know of anybody else that's got one like this, but they're talking about the tear in it, and some of the copies that we've seen have a copy of the tear. But anyway, that's kind of the deal on that. Um... This picture here is cotton top. Well, that's another thing he was telling me. Uh, I'm trying to find, here it is, this book here. I got so many little scrapbooks going. This is an actual picture of cotton top mounts right here. This is cotton top mounts. And in the movie, they made him look quite simple. And he said, Neil, he probably was quite simple. But he wasn't as bad as they made him look. Simple lots. Yeah, I know. He said he was never gone to school, was never educated. When they hung him, he was six foot tall, 185 pounds, and he said he was mean. 
He liked to fight. He said, why do you think they would take a little simpleton type guy to every bad thing that happened? He was at the shooting of the three boys. He was the battle of, of Grapevine. He got wounded here. He actually passed out, got shot in the arm and passed out from loss of blood on the way home. He said he was six foot tall, around 185 pounds, and said he was mean. And he says, that's the deal on this. He says that uh, he, he just wasn't as mean, uh, I mean, as simple as they made him look and so forth. But that's some of the stuff here. Now, you're going to go over and see the cabin. Let me show you that real quick. You're going to see a cabin that has been rebuilt. It's not the original cabin. Oh, okay. It's a replica. This is a picture of the original. This picture here was taken from what I've been told probably around the early 1940s, late 30s, somewhere in that range. It was over 110 years old when this picture was taken. Wow. And they had remodeled. They've put a tar paper roof on it. They've put siding over the logs, okay? Now, the reason they had to rebuild it, when I was growing up, it looked like that. Well, I'll it was be literally done. just falling in. So the county acquired the property, and I actually talked to several of the men that worked on it. No nail guns, no air guns, no electrical saws. Everything was done by hand. When you get over there, check this out. The cabin is sitting on its original foundation. Okay, when you get over there, check this out. You all have been over there. Mm -hmm. yes. show this to them. Uh, the cabin's sitting on its original foundation. The logs are hand hewn. So uh, did the city come in and build it? The county. County. The county. And that, that, that was probably their historical group? Yeah, we had, it was, yeah, and it was probably back late 80s, early 90s. Uh -huh. uh, if when you get over there, check this out. The supports under the front porch are stone. They have reused all of those stone supports. Uh, well, that's pretty good trying to rebuild a like replica. Pay attention to those front steps. Those are the originals. And from what I've been told by several of the Hatfield family members, there's two little sets of footprints in the top step that are Preacher Aunt's Hatfield grandchildren's footprints mm -hmm. still in the There he is. Oh. There he is. Now, the hog trial took place in his house in 1878. One of the signs next to the road says 1873, and it's inaccurate. I don't know if they got the eight and the three mixed up or they're just confused. Uh, I don't but, know. But there's also another sign there that has the right step, yep. the granite sign. But the hog trial took place there in 1878 in the house. But this is also a centralized location, and around that cabin's where all the elections took place. Uh -huh. That's where John C. met Roseanne in 1880 and 1882. That's where the fight happened between all that. So you got three main things there. Now I'll shut up on this one, and I'll tell you a little bit about him, about where he got burnt, and show you a couple things on that. Um, in the movie, the hog trial took place over in Pikeville in a big two-story log courtroom. <laughs> Oh, what? It's in the man's house over here on Blackberry. Is that right? Okay. Now, in the movie, Wall Hatfield was the judge. Okay, so I was going to ask you, who was the Did judge? Did you start it? I said in the movie. Uh-huh. That's inaccurate. Okay. The man that lived in the house was Preacher Ants. He was the man over the hall truck. Oh, really? Now, a little later, they showed him being the judge when Sam and Paris McCoy, two nephews of Randall, got into a fight with a man by the name of Bill Staten. He's a nephew of Randall. Those are cousins fighting each other. Yeah. And they ended up killing him, and he acquitted them on self-defense. That was accurate. That happened in West Virginia where he was the judge. Oh, the judge. Okay. Now, this is Daryl Fetty. He produced the miniseries on the History Channel. He played Doc Rutherford in the movie. Uh -huh. He's been here and got to chat with him a time or two. He was here with Dean King, who's gotten one of the latest books out. Well, what's the deal with the horseshoe? I'll tell you that in a second. Okay. Don't jump ahead. Don't jump ahead. No, that's, no, that's fine. I'll tell you in a second. Okay. I've got a one-track mind, and once I get going, i got to finish that. I got I'll, I'll lose you. I got it. Uh, but I was asking, and we were chit-chatting, and from what I've been told, the reason that they made Wall the judge instead of the man in the house, Devil Ants' name is William Anderson Hatfield. Okay. The man that lived in the house is Anderson Hatfield. Oh. They didn't want it to be confusing to the public. Oh, yeah. So they made Wall the judge. Well, the problem with that is nobody called either one of those two birds Anderson. Uh huh. Ants is short for Anderson. Devil Ants was Devil Ants and Preacher Ants was Preacher Ants. That's how the families can tell them apart. They're first cousins. Oh, God. As a matter of fact, they've each got a brother named Elias who are first cousins. How do you tell them apart? Uh huh. One is called Good Elias and one was called Bad Elias. So they had two Elias. Now, here's what's funny. The preacher's brother was Bad Elias. Devil Lance's brother was Good Elias. Just oh. the opposite of what you thought. But they could have done it accurately if they'd have wanted to. Yeah, yeah. 
Now about the horseshoe. Randall's house sit up here where my house sits uh -huh. is where the barn and the corral and everything was at. Uh -huh. And the diggers have been here and they found things. I found this right out here in the hill in the back, which means it came from the, the, the barn that was here. And you can see that's not a brand new shoe. No. Okay. I found this. That is a part of a ox shoe. Now the University of Kentucky's archaeological team was here and it's just one half of the shoe. I thought uh -huh. it was a broken horseshoe. She said, see how much wider it is? Her name was Kim McBride from the yeah. University of Kentucky's archaeological team. Yeah. And she says, uh, that was pretty well a real winner here in the fact that it was probably from the 1870s, 1880s when they lived here because they plowed with oxen in those days. Uh -huh. They were so much bigger and stronger. Yeah. And that came from that. And then I found this in the hill. Don't know what that is over here. Hmm. It, uh, some say it's a punch for leather. Others say you could lock gates and stuff up with it. I mean, who knows what it is, but it's not a brand new one. And you can tell it more than likely. I found the, Okay. The sledgehammer. Now, there's no markings on it at all, so I don't know what year, whether it was from the 1930s and 40s or from the 1870s. But found that out. Here. So I'm finding a few little things like that from right here. With you the know, bar. I don't know, but it looks to me like this is split down the middle right here. Well, it was, and then fused together to make some type of. That's why they say they think it might be a leather punch or something. Yeah, uh, it looked to me like. Yeah. It. But anyway, so that's what the horseshoes and things are. This is from right here. This has been a very good uh, uh, true story. Yeah, we no. told him it was true. He was like, no, it's not. See, I, like, I, yeah, I it thought, is. I know you're going to lie, but I thought I watched Andy Griffith a lot. They had a... Uh, they had hat, a Hatfield hat, and McCoy. No, they had a Hatfield and it was another name. Yeah, it wasn't a McCoy. The Carters. Huh? The Carters and the Hatfields. Might have been. Might, yeah. It might have been. But they Carter. got it from that. And see, there's been other movies. Jack Palance from the movies. Have you ever remembered Jack Palance, yes, the movie yeah. star? Uh -huh. Yeah. My buddy Jimmy was big buddies with him. Oh, really? And he was invited to uh, Hollywood in 74 or 75 when he was playing. They well, he and Billy Crystal something started in the movie. In that movie? Yes. The, the, where they were moving the cattle drives. That's it. Uh, fake cattle or uh, it's city slickers. City slickers. That's yep. City slickers one and what two. Is it? City slickers one yeah. and two. And Jack Palance played the cowboy named Curly. He yep. did. But see, they were big buddies. <clears throat> Jimmy lived the head of the hall over here at Aunt Betty's, where y'all just came from. Uh -huh. the last house in it. Lauren Green, the daddy on Bonanza, Bonanza. was a big buddies with him. He would come and stay with him in his house just to get away from Hollywood. Oh, uh, you're kidding me. He, Jimmy's been around. You know. <laughs> And he's the one that gave me the picture and stuff. And now, like I said, we, he, he died. It, March is coming up. It was sometime a year ago this March. How old was he when he died? 83, 84, something like that. But, uh, yeah, it's just been amazing. And the people I get to meet and the things. Boy, I'll tell you and what, the you, stories. Got, you got a treasure here. Did you know that? Well, it's not all mine. This is everybody's. And this, I just own part of it. The man that owns that up there is the next house over. He sold me my property here. We have an easement for my property to his and his to mine, and I have the only driveway well, that's it's accessible. Good that you, for a family that really feuded a lot, it's good that you got everything to work that you can be cordial to each other. You're going to love this one. I've got, I can sit here and talk to you for 10 hours. I know. She can tell you. I can blow up an onion inside. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Hatfield and his wife, Dolly. Uh -huh. They're both deceased now. They both died around 2001. Two of the nicest people you'd ever want to meet in your life. I've known them for years, and I was working at their house over in Beach Creek, probably around 1996 or 97. And I was getting ready to leave, and I said, Mr. Hatfield, which one of the Hatfields did you come through? How are you related? You're going to see how blessed I am, how I know these people. He said, I'm the grandson. Valentine Hatfield, Uncle Walt, Neville Lance's brother. Mm. Oh my goodness. He's the one that went to prison and died in prison from yeah. the shooting of the three boys. Did you notice I said grandson? Yeah. Not great grandson. Wall had a boy named Alan. Alan had Lawrence. Oh, and, and, and his brother Esther. I knew Esther too. Well, that was a, uh, close to see. He said, You're into the feud, are you? Oh yeah. He goes into this house and comes out and starts showing me things, had some bullets from he said it was Randall's uh, from uh, Devil Lance's 
rifle. Yeah. His wife showed me an Afghan that they said was crocheted by Devil Lance's wife, Lavasi. On and on and on. I got ready to leave. Stood up. He said, before you go, I got a question for you. And it was like from here to you, to me. That stone they're sitting on, stone bench. Mm -hmm. He said, do you know what that is? And I said, no, sir. He said, that's the hearthstone to the fireplace from Wall's cabin. I'll be done. See how it's arched? And you yes, can see I the, do. You can see the char underneath and everything? Yes, sir. I said, Mr. Hatfield, where'd that cabin see it? I'm being told it was over here at Beach Creek. And nobody can tell me where. And he said, you really don't know? No. He took two steps back and went like this. He said, son, we're standing on it. Hmm. That's why I had a five-star rating. I would show you things like this. I would show you the main eight or nine sites that everybody sees, and I'd show you about ten more like that that's not on any group shirt. Been blessed. You know what I'm saying? Ain't Don't look at me. You thought I was pulling the wool over your eyes. <laughs> Ain't that well, it's just like Randall. Like I said in the movie, they show him burning up in a, in a cabin. I'm going to show you out of this little book here, because I don't have it in my scrapbook. A picture of him laying in his coffin. There's about eight or nine pages of this stuff in here uh -huh. from the National Registry of Historical Places. Yes, sir. When they were nominating these in 1976 for and we're on the rest National Registry of Historical Places. Some of these are quotes from trials and things. The reason I can't put all of the pages in here, it's about a 16 to 18 page deal. Some of them have uh, record locations and documents in the courthouses and stuff for people's property. Can't do that. Yeah. 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 But there's things in here, for instance, everybody, when you, when you get to a certain page, uh -huh. uh, let's see if I can find one. See, this page continues from this one. Yeah. But if you get to a page and it starts in the middle of a sentence over here in front, most of the gut of that page has something to do with the picture either in front of it or behind it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, like this one here starts, it talks about something about a stubby beard. Yeah. But what they're doing, this is talking about the next picture over, which is the yeah, brother Asa Harmon. Yeah. He was killed. He was the first one killed. And then a few things in here. Everybody has seen the... That's a picture of Randall's wife. Yeah. That is the only known picture of her. Really? It's a drawing from the court proceedings in Pikeville in 1889 when they were trying the men over there. It was sketched by a man from the Louisville Courier Journal. Well, and that's the you. only known exactly. picture. Ain't that wild? Everybody has seen pictures of Randall. Okay, that's old Randall. Wow. Well, this is a picture. I don't know if you've ever seen this one or not. This is Randall when he was young. Mm. Oh, well, wow. I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. His dad and his mom. Devil Lance. Yeah. In the movie, they showed him riding a big black horse. Why? Because he rode a big black horse. Now, let me give you a little trivia question. <laughs> what was the horse's name? Anybody ask? His name, the horse's name was Fred. Fred. <laughs> but you can see it's a beautiful horse. Did you say Fred? Fred. That was Devil Lance's horse's name, Fred. Oh, uh, well, okay. But you can see everything in here over, over Aunt Betty's house. I've got pictures of the baby's grave mm -hmm. and all this in well, here. Uh, over where Devil Lance is buried, this is Troy and Elias, he's two of his sons. Over where he's buried, next to Devil Lance's statue, is these two here. You, you've been over there probably. No, I've been up on the mountain there. Okay. <clears throat> these are right next to Devil Lance's, and right now you can see there's urns on them. Well, you go over there now, those urns have been stolen. People have taken the urns off them. Who takes care of the cemetery? Not too many people. It's in pretty rough, pretty rough shape. <laughs> Yeah, you can't get up and you can't even. You, yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to get up. Yeah, you it's like a, what, a mile and a quarter or something. No, oh, it's not that. About 140 yards, yeah. but it's it's steep and rough. Like the baby thing, he, he tried to walk with the baby thing. Yeah. But I'm getting back to this book. He's standing in front of there. This is Troy and Elias. That's their headstones. That's Devil Ants and his wife. They both were killed the same day, October 17th, 1911. They were in Boomer, West Virginia, supplying moonshine to other saloons, and they had their own. They'd been in a fight with this guy before. This little page here before explains it. Is that what slide. they did for a living? Among other things. They were also guards of some of the mines and the railroad. But it tells a little story here how they got in a fight and this Italian guy pulled a pistol and shot both of them. Oh, no. They returned fire and killed him. All three of them went there and died that day. Oh, I'll that. And some people say that's what caused Devil Ants to get saved and baptized in, uh, in the fall of 1911. And that's not true. 
They both were shot and killed October 17th, 1911. Did he get saved? He got yeah. saved the first part of September of 1911. Really? And was baptized the end of September. And then the shooting happened October, which is the next month. So it had nothing to do with that. What is going on? All right. Well, we didn't get to do a lot of things because, unfortunately, it started to rain. But we did have a great time. Um, just remember to hit that like button, subscribe, turn those notifications on for the future content. And... <laughs> nice face. Don't do what he's doing. You look like a turtle. Yeah, you look like a turtle here. <laughs> a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for joining us on Making History One Exploration at a Time. See y'all later. <laughs>